Good day and welcome to another session of Cardiac Imaging Agora. In this session, we will go over a step-by-step -step reading of a technetium pyrophosphate scan, a scan that's now being used commonly in patients uh, with suspected diagnosis of ATTR amyloidosis. For this session, uh, I am going to use one essential reference uh, for, uh, for reading these uh, uh, scans, which was published recently by the American Society of Nuclear Cardiology. It's a very uh, practical practice point. Uh, it's not heavy on uh, data, but it's actually very clinically useful. And uh, I think uh, it's, uh, if you're starting to read this or if you've been reading these for a while, for a while uh, these scans, you should be uh, going back to this reference and try to harmonize your reading uh, to conform with, uh, with the national uh, practice guidelines. So again, we're going to do this step by step and review, uh, start with reviewing uh, uh, these scans uh, in a logical way that leads to a clinically meaningful uh, report. So the first thing we will review is uh, we will review the planar images. Again, I'm not going to go over how the test is performed. This is uh, clearly uh, explained in the American Society of Nuclear Cardiology guidelines on performing these tests and the practice points also. They give you a step-by-step -step how to perform this test. But when you do the test and the patient is done and the images are now ready for review, you go to whatever software you use to review and you start with these images. And the first thing you want to look at are the planar images. For all of us who are used to use SPECT for myocardial perfusion images, these which usually are the first scans to look at. And what you notice here right immediately, you will notice uh, a, a increased uptake over the cardiac uh, uh, area or in the heart. Uh, in a normal person without the technician, without the amyloid, uh, this should not uh, be the case. Uh, there should be no cardiac uh, uptake. So first you notice this increased uh, cardiac uptake which uh, we will talk about how to uh, uh, scale it or how to score it later uh, compared to uh, the uh, adjacent uh, bones. Uh, this cardiac uptake uh, is uh, uh, intuitively, uh, we usually score it uh, in relationship to the bones in the adjacent uh, area in the chest. And this is uh, from, again, from the American Society of Nuclear Cardiology guidelines and accepted national guidelines. Uh, you start with uh, grading at zero, which is no, no uptake uh, uh, and normal uh, bone uptake. So there is no cardiac uptake, and that's usually we get it at zero. One is there is an uptake, but it's less than the cage and less than the uh, uh, bony cages in the ribs. Uh, grade two is uptake equal to the ribs. And then grade three, as is the case here, you have uptake more than the uh, rib cage. Uh, and this is the most severe uptake you can uh, get. So it's a grade zero to three and you grade it based on comparing it to the uh, adjacent uh, ribs. Then we do some uh, quantitative uptake. The prior up, uh, scale was uh, a semi-quantitative visual uptake. Now we will use a, uh, a more quantitative, of a quantitative uptake where we draw an area of interest around the heart and we take that same area of interest uh, in the contralateral chest and the ratio of the counts in these areas will constitute what we call the heart to contralateral ratio. Uh, in uh, general, as seen in figure one here, again, this is uh, taken from the American Society of Nuclear Cardiology guidelines. Uh, you can see that uh, this patient in, in figure one has an uptake of 2.08, which is significantly high, uh, consistent with the diagnosis of uh, 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 TTR amyloidosis. Our patient here has an uptake of 1.83. Again, this is high uptake, uh, indicating uh, high, suggestion, high uh, likelihood of uh, uh, TTR uh, amyloid cardiac involvement. The next uh, image we look at is to review the transmission images and the emission images as we do with all patients who have CT and uh, perfusion or in this case uh, uh, images uh, specific for a, a target which is amyloid uh, fiber. Uh, in this case you can see there is uh, increased uptake in the, in the myocardium these images for me are essential to make sure that what I'm looking at in the prior images here in these images is not uptake in the cavity, in the RV or LV cavity. Now we're sure that the uptake is in the myocardium and we can see this, again, this is a very common to see a staring pattern uh, of uptake where the uptake is not seen in the apex 
as is the case what we see on, uh, if you read echocardiograms and you see this uh, uh, strain sparing pattern in the apex. Again, uh, these are essential images uh, to look also at extra cardiac uptake. Do you have any uptake in the chest, any uptake in the ribs? Some of these patients have been resuscitated. Sometimes you see uptake in the ribs after rib fractures uh, or other uh, uh, pathologies. We go next to the uh, construction images or reconstruction images, similar to what we do with SPECT or PET. We make sure the area of interest around the heart is, uh, is in view. Uh, we uh, uh, zoom on that, and then we process these images, as you can see here. Uh, we review re the reconstructed images. Uh, this is a, a case here where we have uh, almost uniform uptake, except for the apex in all the myocardial tissue and also notice the uptake in the right ventricle. We'll talk about this in a, in, in a few slides, but this is uh, an important uh, thing to, uh, to uh, comment on when you're reading these scans. The next uh, images are uh, the CT images independent of the tracer images. These are just the transmission images. Again, these are important to comment on. Remember when we're imaging these patients, these are patients who are elderly. They have other, other pathologies that could be possible. We look at, uh, at the uh, lung windows and the bone windows. We comment on the presence of calcium in the, in the uh, coronary arteries. We comment about presence of uh, calcium in the uh, aortic valve. Very often there is uh, overlap between amyloid heart disease and uh, aortic stenosis. And if there are other pathologies in the lungs, like tumors, masses, uh, things within suspect incidental findings, uh, we will comment uh, on. After we do that, we go and review the ancillary data. The ancillary data consists of the blood tests performed on this patient, and this patient had a troponin that's constantly high, but in the mild range high. Uh, over time, he's been to the hospital multiple times with the troponins uh, above the cutoff for, uh, uh, for detection, uh, at 34 here, and an elevated pro-BMP. And we look at the EKG in this instance, but it's not common in, uh, and PTR amyloidosis, we have low voltage in the limb bleeds, as you can see here. However, we know at least 50% uh, plus of patients with PTR amyloidosis do not have, do not satisfy this criteria for uh, a low voltage on the EKG. Then the next thing we look at, we look at the, if the patient had, you know, if the patient uh, had a prior echocardiogram, in this instance here, this patient had an echocardiogram, and you can see this bright speckly pattern in the left ventricle and in the right ventricle, very well seen here uh, in the subcostal uh, images, thickening of the valves. Uh, again, a pattern uh, consistent what we see in infiltrative cardiomyopathies, and in this instance, uh, amyloid heart disease. Then we look at uh, if we have any specific uh, high-end imaging performed by ECHO. In this instance, we performed uh, strain imaging on this patient, and we can see this uh, very uh, uh, nice uh, cherry on the top uh, kind of uh, pattern. Uh, with a very marked uh, reduction in global uh, longitudinal strain uh, for this patient, sparing the apex. Uh, again, uh, this is what we saw on the technician pyrophosphate scan. We don't have apical involvement with the, at least by imaging with the disease. And again, here by echo, we can see this apex being uh, uh, spared. Then we go to the most important part of this uh, thing, of this uh, exercise is to uh, provide the physician with a meaningful uh, report. Again, uh, this is, uh, we've been doing this, uh, at least our center, uh, in a standardized fashion since 2011. We updated our reporting in 2016 to uh, enrich it with other uh, data. We comment about the demographics of the patients, uh, whether they had a prior biopsy or not, uh, what uh, agent we have used, and what is the time interval for imaging, whether it's one hour or three hours from the uh, injection of the uh, technetium pyrophosphate. In this instance, it was three hours, so 180 minutes. So this is uh, all in a database uh, fashion, so all structured reporting uh, that we generate for, uh, for uh, consistency of reading, as, as well as for uh, future clinical uh, research and uh, uh, follow-ups. Then we go to step-by-step, step, as I showed you before, we start filling these uh, pages. So this patient, we decided it's level three or grade three, which is uptake more than the uh, ribs with a heart to contralateral ratio of 1.83, consistent again with what uh, has been uh, recommended by the American Society of Infrared Cardiology guidelines uh, uh, here. Uh, we go then uh, and we look at uh, the pattern of uptake by SPECT. Uh, we comment about the uptake. In this instance, it's diffuse. 
and we comment about the uptake in the right ventricle. I mentioned this earlier, and it's important. Many studies have shown that uh, right ventricular uptake uh, is associated with uh, worse uh, prognosis in these patients. Also, we comment about presence of pleural effusions. In this case, it's mild, but in most cases, uh, we find large pleural effusions on these uh, patients. We move on uh, to a comment about incidental findings, whether it's on the CT or uptake in areas that uh, should be no uptake there. Let's say you have bony fractures, uh, you have uh, other uh, uh, malignancies or uh, 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 pathologies that can take uh, up uh, or uh, uh, take uh, technetium pyrophosphate and retain it. Uh, we comment about the CT, the way of, whether we have coronary calcification whether we've seen any water that's dilated, lung nodules, uh, pleural effusions, and so on and so forth. So these are incidental findings that we should report on in every, in every uh, uh, report, uh, not to miss them. And finally, we come to the conclusion, we have to give a definitive uh, result if we can, uh, so we do not confuse the uh, workup. Uh, again, we follow the guidelines as stated here on the, uh, on the right. And we fill it here. In this case, uh, the patient was diagnosed was consistent with TTR amyloidosis, uh, given the increased uptake, a grade three uptake, and the hard to control lateral ratio of uh, 1.83. Again, uh, important to give a definitive result if you can. Uh, sometimes in a, a small minority of patients, we cannot, and therefore we uh, uh, say it's equivocal. And we write in the comment session section here uh, what we should uh, recommend as uh, further uh, studies. Now, some caveats before I can conclude. Uh, grade two to three uptake uh, is suggestive of TTR amyloidosis. We do not know of many entities that cause that. You still can have AL amyloidosis with this kind of uptake. Uh, therefore, uh, you should not 100% uh, uh, say there is no way this could be AL amyloidosis. It's definitely TTR amyloidosis. Therefore, in most of these patients or in all our patients, we still recommend serologic testing for AL and all patients referred for uh, non-invasive imaging, just to make sure, uh, first, that we're dealing with TTR amyloidosis, and two, uh, uh, to make sure there is no uh, uh, overlapping pattern. We've had a uh, few instances where the patients had both TTR and AL amyloidosis. These are diseases of the elderly, so they can occur simultaneously. So this, uh, we have found this, of course, by uh, biopsy, by going all the way to a biopsy or by doing uh, a biopsy plus a technician pyrophosphate scan plus serology uh, to, determine, uh, to determine that. Now, uh, as we do more of these tests, we're gonna have cases where we have mildly positive technician pyrophosphate scans. These could be a result of either AL amyloidosis or we are moving to an era where we're detecting this earlier and earlier because of family screening and genetic testing. So we could be dealing with early uh, TTR amyloidosis, we do not have enough data yet to comment about how this disease progresses as far as the imaging side of it, but uh, you should keep that in mind. A mildly positive scan does not rule out the disease. Uh, this could be early disease, uh, TTR, or uh, AL amyloidosis. With that, I conclude uh, this uh, uh, brief tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much.